All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rude Devil. Welcome back to more BFME 2. I was about to say versus. That is definitely not it. This is the Adain mod. Welcome back. Today we're checking out the awesome faction that is Imladris, aka Rivendell. And as you can see, I think they have one of the nicest building sets ever. I mean, these bases look so nice. I mean, look, this is just all so beautiful. You got this thing, you got this thing, you got these dudes, you got an eagle there. And look, you've even got walls. You've even got a gate that works and everything. And anyway, this is uh, this is my overview of the Imlargis faction. Now, I think I should just get this straight out of the way. Imlargis is very different to other factions. I think I said that in my dwarf video that they tried to like differentiate each faction. With uh, Imlargis, your it centers around your scholars and gathering knowledge. And here, here are your scholars. You can make more from this building here. Which is also acts as like, if you ever played Warcraft, like the building that you used to recruit heroes. Like I've got uh, the Sons of Elrond I can make, and an Elf Lord who's like some superhero dude. But yeah, these guys, they just gather knowledge. That's their job, and you can use them to uh, you can use them to upgrade other units that you have, give them new formations, give them like bonuses. But also, gathering knowledge is the only way you can get more power points. Now. I've played this game shape a lot, so I've got all, most of the powers unlocked already. But basically, you click this little button here, learn wisdom, and you can't move your scholars, and you get power points for each scholar that you have, and I think that also goes with how many units you kill like, in that time. That could be wrong, I'm not completely sure. Remember this is all still in German, and I don't speak German. Uh, let's see. We've got the basic barracks, you can build your swordsmen, your uh, champions who, they do less damage but they're greater against like horde units, so orcs and goblins. Uh, you got your lances, which are your pikes, you got your archers, and then you got like the super dudes, who, I think I have one in this corner here. Yeah, here you go. Basically another form of like elven super units, and you got Gwei here there too. Uh, let me see, you got the stables, where you can make these Glorfindel Wind Riders, which are like the soup. Uh, well, the Imlarges faction has a lot of these super units. I'm just gonna put it that way. Basically those units that they introduce in Rise of the Witch King, which are almost heroes, but not. This has a lot of those, so the Glorfindel Wind Riders are essentially their cavalry version of that. And they're right here. They're pretty beautiful. Uh, let me see, we got, uh, this, which makes heroes. What does this do? Okay, this makes spellcasters. Um... Basically, there's one for each element. You can also put them on your uh, fortress to have like a sort of defense. Um, I think I've got one here. This is like a fire and water one that I've merged together. And they have the water uh, mages give me a healing spring, which heals my units. And this one does... Oh, it allows units to do double damage. Here, give them to them. I think last time I checked this out, the animation wasn't that impressive. If there is an animation, I don't think there is. Alright, and then when you combine the two, you get a secret power. Which, uh, like, slows down enemies in a target area. And the animation for this is kind of cool, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Anytime. There you go, so there's a bit of uh, fog, a bit of rain. Now they're all disoriented. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Um... I think that's it for their buildings, actually. These are just their farms. One thing I will mention right bef uh, just before I get into their military is this little dude here. Technically, he's a hero, but he doesn't cost anything. He doesn't use up any command points. You just level him up. You, you spend your resources leveling him up, and he just gets all these different bonuses. He's basically like El uh, Elrond's little helper. Kind of like Santa's little helper, but for the elves. And I think... Uh, one he has, yeah, which helps farms, so let's just use that power. If he knows how to do it. Come on. Hello. Left click on a friendly farm. There you go. Basically, he just buffs all your stuff. You have uh, uh, buffs for your teammates. You have, uh, yeah, this one allows heroes to cost less, but well, that doesn't really help me now. I've got all the heroes on the field. And I keep getting attacked by Isengard. So they should be should be taken out. Anyway, we're gonna start over here. We're gonna start over here. We're gonna start on this side and work our way around. Uh, from the inn, 
I've just made a bunch of stuff. We have this hero, who basically he's quite cheap, doesn't do much damage, doesn't have much health, but I guess he's more of a stealth unit. You can hide him, you can run him, uh, like retreat him really easily. More of a hit and run dude. You've got these units. I think they're called like Linden. Oh, let's check. What are they called? Oh, they're called, yeah, Guardians of Linden. They're pretty expensive. And, uh, yeah, they can switch between their bows and their daggers, and they do a lot of damage. <laughs> you've got the Dancing Hobbits, as you'd expect. And, this here represents Imladris's greatest weakness. I don't have any of their own siege. So basically, you have to recruit these Hobbit uh, ballistas, which fire fireworks, okay? They don't fire conventional, like, they don't fire like boulders or those huge harpoons. They fire fireworks. So yeah, that's their biggest shortcoming. However, they somewhat make up for it with these guys. These are Hobbit Donkey Riders. Hobbit Donkey Riders with their own banner carrier on their white little donkeys. And oh my god. Just make an entire army of these. Plus you got Bilbo, and he can use Sting, that's pretty cool. Alright, to the main force. Something that you should know about the uh, elves, they build stuff slowly, they recruit units even slower than that, and their units are all pretty expensive. However, they, they do pack a punch, and it's it's supposed to be because elves are, like, you know, they live for hundreds of years, they're quite experienced in combat. So while they are expensive, they uh, are proficient at killing things. Alright, let's see, we've got these archers here, which look really nice. Those are all new uh, textures on their armor. They get golden tip arrows instead of silver thorns, so it's just a nice change. Uh, let me see, what else we got? I think these are the lancers? No, these are the champions. They've got like double bladed things, so they're like the elven equivalent of Darth Maul. They're pretty cool. Uh, here are the lancers. And because I upgraded them with the uh, scholar, they get this, uh, they get like a bonus, which they get 70% armor. For 30 seconds. That's kind of cool. You got the Glorfindel Wind Riders. Uh, surely I have some swordsmen. Uh, swordsmen, where are you? Mm, hmm, maybe I, maybe I got rid of all my swordsmen. This is an Elven Lord. He's almost like a super. He's like the, as close as you can get to a hero. Except instead of leveling up, you can just buy all of his upgrades and make him an absolute tank. How much help does he have? 2,000, and that's only at level 1. Uh, let's see. For heroes, we've been through this guy, Gildor. We've got Lady Arwen. She's pretty awesome. She has a heal, because all elves should get heal. And uh, it's pretty much obvious that they get heal. But she's got like a Elendil equivalent, where uh, enemies run in fear. But she got a really nice animation. Again, the Adain mod just outdoes itself with all these like new assets that you use. Uh, 50% speed, uh, double armor, I guess when you want to run away as Arwen, that's what you use. But this is, this is the, this is the, this is the icing on the cake. Just look what this does. Yep, it just summoned Aragorn. It just summoned Aragorn. Level 1, you can level him all the way up, I'm pretty sure you can get him to have, uh, uh Army of the Dead. So that's really cool. Uh, Glorfindel. Glorfindel on his horse. He's also the. He's not the ring hero, he's just carrying the ring for the moment. He's got Wind Rider, which you should all know. Starlight, which gives like a bonus to attack and defense and also experience. So almost like a, a leadership that you have to activate. Um, this one, this ability here, if I'm reading that description right, it means if he dies, the thing that he marked dies. So. Uh, at the very end of this video, I might just mark, you know, a random guy and see if that works. He's also got this, the Light of Hope. Now, depending on where you shine this, it can either paralyze your enemy, or it can, like, buff your allies. Now, this is pretty cool. Also, this light is taken straight from the tutorial of BFME2. They use this light to tell you where to go. It doesn't last very long, which is really annoying. But yeah. And it, for those thinking that his Blade of Purity is gone, we just dismount him, and we get Blade of Purity, which gives him 100% damage, 50% armor. No invulnerability this time, but still pretty cool. And Riders, look, hardly losing any health. These, these guys don't take damage. Um, we've got 
way here. Let's see, we've got our donkey riders. Uh, let's see. Mm, oh yeah, Elrond. How could I forget? I think think I think I'm gonna stop talking now, and I'm just gonna show Elrond because <laughs> that's the best way to do this thing. Level one flood, <laughs> as you do. There you go. He's also got uh, Elrond's advice where he can grant experience to other heroes. Level five, he gets uh, his like battle armor, which he's already wearing. He gets his heal, and then his trademark. Which actually doesn't do that much damage to buildings anymore. Also, I don't really like the new animation for the Whirlwind. For some reason, it looked better in the old one. That could just be my memory. But, yeah. Anyway, now that that's done, we can really show off the creme de la creme. We can summon Tom Bombadil. Uh, we can put enemies to sleep, which is kind of cool. Uh, we have our Elven Wood equivalent. Which just increases your armor. Blessed Mist. Healing Gestures, which is a heal. Weapons of the Noldor, which is Rallying Call. But with a nice Elven Horn. Uh, let's see. Cloud Break. Council of Elrond. Here we go. This randomly summons anyone that was at the Council of Elrond. I've done this and got Boromir, Legolas, Gimli. And this time I got Legolas. With a bunch of, with a bunch of archers. Which is really cool. <laughs> And usually they're leveled up to the point where they have their most dangerous powers. And uh, when you get, if you get Boromir, he comes with a bunch of uh, Gondor units, which is really awesome. And uh, oh yeah, G uh, Gimli comes with Gloin, and you know they have all their powers activated, so you just really hurt the enemy. You've got the Super Duper Flood, which again doesn't do hardly any damage to buildings, if any. Which is a shame. Purely meant to destroy your armies. And then here we go. This is the big one. This is the big one. Look at that. The Elves of Noldor. You are seeing that, right? Be back there. We have the Sealed Door, Anarion. Uh, oh, sorry, Alendil, Anarion, uh, Isildur. Door, and we have the mighty Gilgalad, the Elven King himself. Look. Look at him destroy that. That is absolute crazy power. And if we activate this, it's tenfold armor. Tenfold armor. He is not going to die anytime soon. He's taken the full force of that fortress and his health is only going down slightly. This is just one of the greatest. Like, when I first saw this, my jaw dropped. Just the fact that they put in Gilgalad with all of his armor and a completely accurate shield and everything. He's got the King of Gondor. As well, just really awesome. They all get their own buffs, which increase their damage and things like that. I think uh, Isildur actually rallies enemies around him, as you'd expect. And it doesn't matter if they die, because honestly, they're a t they're a spawn. They're they're on a timer. They're gonna go down soon. But just uh, I, the fact that they made this all from scratch. I mean, look, where, where would they get that model from? For uh. Uh, Elendil. It's just too awesome. The Tenfold Armor. I just, uh, what is the name of that power? Oh, it's just called Star Shield. <laughs> I thought it'd be like, Badass Elven King of Doom. And give him another boost. Alright, now while Gilgal is dying, send in the cavalry. <laughs> or the donkey cavalry. Go, my beautiful hobbits. Go, my beautiful hobbits. So yeah, I actually think let me see, if I, when I actually get around to killing the enemy, I think I'll activate this Learn Wisdom and we'll see how many, how much my power points increase. You donkeys don't seem to be doing anything. Did you just run through wild men? What I, what, what did I expect from hobbits, honestly? No trampling whatsoever. Uh, god damn it. That might have been a waste of time, hobbits. <laughs> At least we have that firework launcher. And we'll just send in the reserves here as well. Alright, now we're gonna give Elrond the one ring. We're gonna see what happens. Jedes Volk ist diesem Schicksal ausgeliefert. Auf Gedeih und Verderb. Es gibt nur einen einzigen Weg. 
Hole den Ring heraus. Alright, well he gets a pretty like he gets new garbs, a shining sword. And I think Oh hold on, what is this? The enemy is at hand. It says he's permanently healed and it just enhances his other abilities, so we're going to put that to the test. Damn it. Okay, it turns out my battery... Turns out this thing can't hit buildings. Hobbits, you make the most worthless things ever. But whatever, here we go. Alright, where is Elrond? There he is. Time to put the one ring to the test. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of an improvement. <laughs> Definitely an improvement. And what's great about the elves is that they, they're just so everlasting. If any of them gets close to death, I have a heal. Elrond has a heal. Arwen has a heal. You even have cloud break to stun my enemies. So while they are expensive, you can def it, it's quite easy to keep them alive. As you can see the golden tip arrows there. I think they look really nice, I really like them. And my wind riders took the most of them. Oh and his flood has a greater area of effect now as well. There it goes. So yeah, anyway, tell me what you think about the shorter format of these videos. I had everything prepared. Uh, if I think I spent the best part of an hour in this game, so if I hadn't done this, yeah, you guys would have had to sit through a lot of me just fending off the enemy, getting everything set. But if you did prefer the old format, I mean, I think I tried it with Mordor, and it wasn't that long. So it really depends what you guys want. I think I can make more of a, a like strategic review of how to play as them when I like when I record it from the beginning. But you can't deny that these Elven units just look so nice with their blue caves and golden armor. Oh, we're going to use this again because our powers come back insanely quickly. Wait, can we put that builder to sleep? No, we can't. And I don't know what it is about Isengard fortresses, but they seem to be incredibly OP. Oh, I guess I don't have any more enemies to... Oh, actually. Do that there. Uh... Alright, Glorfindel. We're going to test out that ability. That Deathlink ability. Oh. Well, it seems like I can't target the enemies. Maybe it has to be an enemy here. I don't know. I wish I knew the answers to all these questions. Yeah, I actually didn't get any power points. Maybe... Oh, it's probably set, you know, because I already unlocked all the power points. Otherwise, I think I'd be at like 30 points by now. Even though it's linked to your scholars, it, uh, when you actually start, you know, get, like just pumping them out and then just killing stuff, you see, you, it really increases quickly. Anyway, before we do the coup de grace, does he have a builder? No, I don't think he does. I think we won this. We're going very slowly. Strider, Blade Master. You know what? Even though he's not an elf, we're gonna finish it with Blade Master. Or they're just gonna. As you can see, that range is really good. So if you capture an N, even though they cost like 900, they're incredibly versatile, incredibly powerful. Go, my elf lords. Well, oh, they're not elf lords, whatever they are. That's a nice color, I like that. Let's see if these guys' health goes down. Or they're just going to slaughter everything in that path. It's gone down a bit. What I like about Aragorn, and you'll actually see this more when I have, when I do my Gondor video, is that his, his garbs change as you level him up to reflect his progression. As you can see, he's like a ranger at the moment. He's a strider. But when you level him up, you should wear the thing he wears in the two towers. And then by the end of it, he'll just be wearing that, uh, like, Captain of Gondor outfit that he wore uh, at the Black Gate. I mean, that wasn't the king's attire, but it looked really nice. 
that had the uh, white tree on it and everything. You guys know the one I'm talking about. Alright, this is going to be the end of the video. That was Imladris. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Next faction will be Mordor, so stay tuned for that. If you have any other requests regarding BFM2 Versus or indeed like online battles in game range, let me know. As always, I'll see you next time.